Konnichiwa, this is the socially distant Shogunstein, and this is just a look at the game from Prospero Hall and uh, Mixlore, and that is Destroyer of Words. It is a Scrabble-type game with an 80s heavy metal team where it's like a battle Scrabble. So here at the uh, Shogunstein household, we like word games. We've been uh, learning Spell Smashers from Renegade, a uh, word game. And then one of our favorite games is Word Domination. And uh, we saw Destroyer of Words, which was a Amazon exclusive and was originally retailing for about 30 bucks, was reduced to, to $8. So for $8 and being socially distanced and stuck in, stuck in the house, $8 we uh, decided to give it a, a try. So I'm going to show you a little bit about this game. First off, the art is awesome. I really do enjoy this art and this, uh, again, this sort of 80s heavy metal uh, look to it. The art is really cool, and I like the, the font and, and the colors. They did a really nice job with that. And also the component quality is very nice. The, the board, it, it kind of sticks up a little bit so you have to maybe put a book on it or something to flatten it before you play but it's a it's a good quality board you got uh wooden uh letter tiles you got nice uh you know player board uh the components are, are nice they came with a, a bag that you you draw back up to the letters so uh, the component quality is is very nice especially for the for the eight dollars now speaking of the the font and the the letters again you have this uh heavy metal font and when you put the letters down the white part of the letter is the the top and that's important because when you're destroying other people's letters and words that's where your uh, destructive power is going to go so it's important when you're putting these down to pay attention to where the white or the top of the letter is. With that said, in playing the game, even with the white, which, you know, is kind of clearly marked, there were several times that when we put the tiles down, or at least I put the tiles down, I still had it the wrong way. So M's and W's, N's and U's. The font is cool, but I did have some problems putting words the, the, the wrong way, even with, again, the, uh, the white representing the top of the, the letter. So that's something to, to keep in mind. So very similar to regular Scrabble. You start off with a uh, bank of uh, nine letters that you're going to play. And then up here is where you're going to keep score in terms of letters that you destroy. So you're going to score a, a couple of different ways at the end of the game, words that you have on the board, and you're going to score for tiles that you've destroyed. And the ones, the ones that are worth the least, are at the top of the, the board. You see the board is divided into four uh, quadrants. You got a yellow, you got a pink, you got a red and a blue. So colors are good, especially as a colorblind gamer. So any letters that you destroy in this region is going to score a one. Now, if you go a little further, that's going to score a two. And then if you get a, a real long shot, that's going to score you three. So again, the, what's going to happen is the longer the word, the farther your destructive power goes, how many squares your, you know, pew pew is going to go. So the longer the word, the more spaces it's going to travel. So getting, you know, into the three is a little more challenging, but you're going to score more points. One thing that we noticed is it's real easy as you kind of stack these up or sometimes as you're going through here to figure out your words. Sometimes it can be you know, the piles can, can fall down or can get mixed up. So be careful when keeping score because it's kind of easy to uh, mix things up. Now, depending on how many letters you use is how far your, you know, your power is going to go to be able to destroy someone else's letter. You're going to move, your, your sort of laser beam is going to move 
depending on how many letters in the, the word. Now, also, when you use more letters, you activate more power. So you're going to want to get at least four letters, and then that gets you the undefiner power, which is basically like a, like a straight shot. You know, you're going to, depending on which way your top letter that you pick is going to going to be uh, is going to be the direction that you go. So it's like a straight shot. Now, in order to be able to use the power, you have to have used at least four letters to get undefiner, and at least one letter on your word has to be on one of these uh, mouthy, you know, uh, little shop of horrors kind of uh, uh, vortex here. If your word does not touch one of these, and there's four for each um, quadrant, and if you're playing a two-player game, you're actually going to control two quadrants, then you can't use your firepower. So you have to have your word on one of these Vortec Little Shop of, Hor Little Shop of Horror uh, uh, things here, and you have to have had at least four letters used. And then as long as one of the letters is over that, then you can use any of the letters to uh, use your power. So undefiner, which is if you used four letters, um, is basically a straight shot. And again, you can pick any of these letters, and it's real. Once you know where the top is, you see the G, it goes straight, you can destroy the... So I'd be able to shoot four. So I could use the G and take out the N. I could use the I and take out the, the E. The S would not do me any good because it was it would go diagonal and miss. The T, again, you can use the, the S. Now, if I used um, the next group of letters, so if it was a total of seven, again, there's nine here. So if I was up to seven letters gone, if I don't want to use undefiner, I could use the lexicutioner, which is like a, a bomb. So it, it stops in the space before uh, where the tile would be, and then it takes out the one behind, above, to the left, and to the right. So it's like a, a bomb effect. And then the hardest one, if you can use all nine of your letters, the uh, erasinator, that one will, again, depending on how many spaces it can go, it'll destroy all the letters in that space. So if there was a, you know, again, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. If there was a letter here and a letter here, it could destroy both of, of those. Now, you're going to get a point. So in this case, you know, if I took out the, uh, the N, it would be, uh, you know, uh, two points because it's in the, uh, the two-point range. Now, what's kind of neat here is if you take this out, and this is what's going to be important when you make your words, C, so we went from scene to C. This is going to be safe because C is still a, a word. If we took out the S, so I used the T and I took out the S, as far as I know, in is not a word. So if you cannot make a word with the letters that are left, these are going to come off the board too. So now, instead of you know just getting the one, I'm sorry, the two points, I would have gotten two, four, six, eight. I would have got, because again, I took out four tiles. Two, four, six, eight, because it was in the, the two zone. So when you build your words, you want to try to have words that you make that, if you lose a letter, can be another uh, word. So that's basically how the, the game works. It's, it's Scrabble with this, uh, you know, like the game says, destroyer of words. Now, a couple things that are a little different. Uh, you don't have to have, you know, the words intersecting with each other. On your turn, you can build as many words as you um, want. And then when you battle, you can take out one. Uh, you can attack once. And then you're going to draw back up to, to nine. And it goes until uh, the, the end game triggers. End game triggers because there's no uh, letters left in the in the in the bag, and you're gonna play until um, either someone runs out of letters or they can't make any words anymore. 
So it's a pretty simple game. It's Scrabble with cool art and this uh, ability to destroy other words. And again, you know, there's the challenge of, you know, wanting to create words that if you lose a letter aren't completely gone or you're going to give the opponent a lot of uh, more points. You can build into someone else's territory as long as you have at least one of your tiles on your uh, quadrant. When you start the first round, there is no destroying of words, and you have to start at the I spot. One of your tiles has to be at the I. If all the letters come off the, your quadrant the next turn, if everything is gone, you have to start back at the, the I. So uh, what do we, we think of the game? Again, the, the component quality is, is cool, is, is, is good components. Um, again, we like word games. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's nice to be able to play a game where you actually have to use vocabulary. So you're playing a game, you're having fun, and you're actually uh, learning words. So that's kind of neat. Anytime you play a game where I think there's vocabulary or, or math, it's a, it's, it's a win-win. Now, there's a couple of things that I, I would point out. I think the game runs a, a little long, and with four players, I can see this taking a, a while because, you know, I don't even want to say analysis par paralysis. You know, just coming up with the words is not something you're going to do one, two, three. So it can take time for people to come up with their words, and that can really slow down the, the game. Also, you know, in regular Scrabble, you have the you know, the indentation so that the pieces don't really move. Here it's real easy to, you know, knock something off a bit and not remember where it was. It's easy to lose track. You know, was it in the, 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 the one, the two, the three? And again, same thing here with the, the stacking up. It's real easy to, to have the, the, the piles, you know, if you have a lot of letters, you know, it f goes into the next space or again, you, you accidentally knock some, some things down. So there's um, a lot of... Uh, you know, there's a lot of parts here that could uh, end up moving around and maybe messing up the game a little bit. And again, I think it runs a little long because, again, you got to come up with words and vocabulary, trying to come up with good words, and that can slow down the, the, the game. So I think it would come down to, to, to this. Would I turn down a game of this? No. Would I encourage, you know... My, my son to play it short because again he's uh working on vocabulary certainly uh pleasant to to look at but some other reservations that i've already mentioned um the font is cool but i know when we played i had a lot of problems with putting letters upside down and things that i thought was uh, one letter ended up being something else so you got to really pay attention to where the, the the top is and again i think the game runs a bit long so at full retail price, would I pay thirty dollars for this game? That uh, was, which was the list price. No, I wouldn't pay thirty dollars. I wouldn't recommend it at thirty. For the eight bucks that it was reduced to on on Amazon, and as far as I know, it's still eight bucks. For eight dollars, I think it's 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 worth it. You know, it's uh, Scrabble's a fun game, and you know the reason it's a classic. And this is a nice twist to it where, again, you can destroy the people's words and you can come up with some, some really good combinations to, to get a lot of uh, points on a turn if, you know, they didn't make a word that, uh, you know, lose a letter, it forms something else. But again, uh, given my choice between word domination, spell smashers, and destroy of words, I think I would definitely go with those two other games. Again, I love word domination, and I think Spell Smashers is a really unique game, too, where, again, it's sort of like a, a double entendre with Spell Smashers and the whole idea of sort of a, a fantasy theme with spells like Harry Potter and, and spelling. So I think that's kind of cool. So I would, you know, in terms of word games, I would much rather play those two games. But for $8, I'm not going to complain about this purchase. You know, it's, uh, it's unique, it's interesting, it's got uh, cool visual uh, presence. But, you know, it's not the, the greatest game that I've ever played, but it's certainly not, uh, not bad. Certainly worth eight bucks. So this is Destroyer of Words, the game of linguistic obliteration. This is the Shogunstein out.